As an urgent question, I rise to ask the Chancellor of the Exchequer to now make a statement on the Bilderberg Conference which he attended. Uh, uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, th this is the first occasion for me, as I have never previously answered a question in the House of Commons on behalf of a private organisation uh, for which the government has no responsibility. Uh, I, I have actually been a member of the steering committee of Bilderberg for many years now, I think about uh, ten years, and by chance actually this is my last year because we have a rule against being on the committee for too long, so I am on the point of stepping down. Um, <laughs> It, 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 other, others are timeless with no rules at all, but this particular role I have now reached the end of my allotted span. The, 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 um, <laughs> the, the Bilderberg organisation exists for the purpose of holding meetings, so once a year in various countries. It exists for no other purpose. Uh, and uh, this year the meeting was uh, held at a large hotel near Watford in Hertfordshire. Uh, the, the, I didn't receive adequate notice of this question as it happened, since I wasn't found in time, to put to hand the list of those who participated and the agenda which we discussed, but we always circulate those before the meeting and they're readily available and I could certainly put any honourable member in touch with a, a source of the list of those who, who took uh, part. Each year we, we invite uh, something over 100 people, it was about 140 this year, uh, drawn from both sides of the Atlantic, from Europe, uh, including Turkey, uh, and uh, from the United States and Canada. The people who attend are drawn from the worlds of government, politics, academia, defence, journalism. Uh, we all attend, in an, the, the, the people who attend change slightly each year. There's a core of those who regularly attend, different people come. Well, I'm, I'm trying to guess at what on earth people are asking a parliamentary question about this for and what they're interested in. Uh, all the people who attend, attend as individuals. We invite people as individuals. Nobody, nobody, nobody attends representing any particular organisation to which they might belong. And a very interesting two or three days take place in which we have discussions on matters of public affairs there's a very wide range of experience, a very wide range of political opinion uh, represented, and uh, the, uh, I always find it greatly adds to the depth of my understanding of what is being talked about and contemplated in many parts of the States and uh, in Europe as well. And it's one of many political gatherings I attend from time to time as part of the background uh, to my activities. And uh, if the Honourable Member for Oldham finds something deeply disturbing in all this, I would only advise that he finds different people to exchange tweets with on his <laughs> internet. <laughs> and perhaps the House might be allowed to return to some matter of rather or more you know, real public interest in, in which this House of Commons has a role to play. Yeah. Mr. Michael Meacher. Uh, I, I thank the right honourable gentleman for that filibuster. Uh, the, the Bilderberg Conference comprises uh, about 130 of the world's or Western world's top decision makers from the banks, the multinational companies, the EU Commission. Uh, I'm coming to the politicians, also from WTO, IMF, World Bank, and of course leading politicians. Uh, from the US, Canada, uh, Eurozone and the UK. Uh, and I think though they were clearly discussing some of the biggest issues uh, confronting uh, the Western economies at this time, why have we had no statement either from the Prime Minister or from the Chancellor or indeed from the uh, Minister without portfolio, all of whom intended in an official capacity, why did they offer no statement, even though such decisions may well have a significant effect on UK government policy or the livelihood of uh, future UK citizens? It is said by some, and indeed by the right honourable gentleman, that Bilderberg is a conspiracy. Of course it's not a conspiracy. But at the same time, 
130 of the world's top decision makers don't travel thousands of miles simply for a cosy chat. They have come here in order to concert their plans to deal with a particularly awkward stage in Western capitalism, and as such, we, the public, are entitled to ask some questions and to hold them to account. The Prime Minister said in 2010, and I quote his words, for too long those in power make decisions behind closed doors and denied people the power to hold them to account. This coalition is driving a wrecking ball through that culture, and it's called transparency. And the Chancellor himself announced uh, his commitment in 2010, and I quote again, to the most radical transparency agenda the country has ever seen. So why is there no transparency about a very crucial meeting that could affect us all? Finally, can he explain, can he explain how the Prime Minister, at the start of last week, can announce a crackdown on corruption and lack of transparency amongst lobbyists, and then he and the Chancellor, by the end of the week, are insisting uh, that the largest and most powerful lobbyist group in the Western Hemisphere, an anti-democratic cabal if ever there was one, should operate in conditions of utter blackout and complete secrecy. The, 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 the Bilderberg meeting does not take any decisions. It doesn't have any resolutions. Uh, we, 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 ha we couldn't possibly reach decisions because of the range of opinions actually represented there. It, it, it is purely a Chatham House rules discussion between the people he describes. Uh, uh, and the, 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 amongst those there, the Shadow Chancellor was there, Peter Mandelson was there, Prime Minister was there, oh. Chancellor the Exchequer was there. <laughs> And most of us said things which, in the discussions which wouldn't have come as a surprise to any of us because we'd off, we knew what our opinions were. We go there for the chance of having an off-the-record informal discussion with the range of people he's described who are indeed distinguished but are not remotely interested in getting together to decide or organise anything. If the Honourable Member actually would like to have an invitation, that's what really lies behind, then... I, I will take his own distinguished claims uh, on participation of the group carefully into account, though I will, of course, consult the Shadow Chancellor before taking this a, 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 a step uh, further. But this, this really, with the greatest respect, is total, utter nonsense. And I would normally regard the Honourable Member as not the sort of person to be taken in by this sort of rubbish. We all take part in lots of political and other discussions as private individuals on Chatham House rules where we do not expect everybody to go out giving a version of what we've just said. Nobody alters their opinions when we're there. On transparency, this government is by a street the most transparent government that I have ever been in. <laughs> but, we, but we can only be transparent for those things for which the government has responsibility and what we're doing as a government. <laughs> The Minister without Portfolio said rather prosaically, I thought, that Peter Mandelson was there. I assume he was referring to no less a figure than Lord Mandelson of Foy. I think that's the person he had in mind. It wasn't, Mr Speaker. We all attend extremely informally. We're not there. <laughs> in any capacity. Yes, I, I, I do. Oh, oh, order, order, order. The Minister, order. The minister can resume his seat. Peter Mandelson can resume his seat. And, uh, Nobody in the House has a better sense of humour than the Right Honourable and Learned Gentleman. I had thought that he realised I was gently teasing him. Sir Tony Baldry! Isn't it rather cruel to oblige the Prime Minister to spend, have to spend a weekend with Lord Mandelson Foy and the Shadow Chancellor? And did anyone who was at the Bilderberg Conference go away any wiser as to how the Labour Party, if they were to win the next general election, was going to square the circle of how they're going to manage uh, to tackle the deficit? No, well, <laughs> I, I can only hope they were, but uh, uh, Chatham House rules prevent me offering any further opinion <laughs> on that question. Mr. Red Balls. Mr. Yeah. Speaker, the, uh, the, um, the idea of the Lord Mandelson attending any meeting informally is not something which uh, I've ever experienced, but uh, 
as one of the British parliamentarians who attended the weekend meeting in Watford, alongside the Prime Minister, the Chancellor, Lord Mandelson, Baroness Williams, and the Right Honourable Gentleman himself, can I ask the Minister without portfolio, does he agree with me it's important that government ministers and shadow ministers meet regularly to discuss important issues with fellow government ministers, opposition politicians, academics, journalists and business leaders from around the world. Can he confirm over the last 60 years the annual Bilderberg meeting has been properly attended by Prime Ministers, Chancellors and Shadow Ministers from all sides of this House, including Lord Healy, Lord Ashdown and the late John Smith? Does he agree that it's a welcome development that the Bilderberg Group now publishes a list of all those who attend and the topics that are discussed? Does he agree with me that the list of topics discussed this weekend, can the US and Europe grow faster and create more jobs, the challenge of Africa, trends in medical research and developments in the Middle East are all vital issues which every government and opposition must grapple with for the benefit of all citizens. And could I finally say, Mr Speaker, we fully understand that it is because the Minister without portfolio is a member of the Bilderberg Steering Group that he is well qualified today to answer this question which was asked to the Chancellor for that reason and for not for his economic expertise. <laughs> if, on the other hand, the Minister without portfolio were to stand in at the next Treasury questions, then we and all conspiracy theorists would then rightly be concerned. Yes, well, I'm grateful to the right old gentleman for perhaps addressing the question more straightforward than I did. He's obviously feeling a little defensive. He's making it a little more seriously than perhaps uh, probably very much more wisely than I did. But what, everything he said is, of course, entirely right. I, I have attended the Bilderberg meetings for many years, uh, actually. And the only reason I attend them is I come away with, I think, my own understanding of political and economic problems in various parts of the world actually improved by the opportunity to have an informal weekend with people of the kind who come and discussing things with amongst other people the shadow chancellor in a completely off the record informal way is also of considerable value but I'm sure he agrees we derive a great deal from it and we hope it actually improves our contribution to debate here eventually as well.